Hi there. So today I'm going to talk about some of the elements of Glogster that allow us to make it more than a simple poster. It's not just a flat place to go. You can actually make it interactive in some ways. So this is the Glog that I started with yesterday about weather. And I'm first going to show you how you can put a link into your Glog. This is one of the elements that can make Glogster a possible option for you in making your own speech and language homepage. Um, it's a really great way to make an attractive and simple homepage. But also, um, this can help make a Glog kind of a landing page for you to set up a theme to explore with students. And you can link your Glog to activities that you wanted to do with the group. Um, so I'm going to do that right here. Um, we had had this precipitation category, which you could further expand with images of the other kinds of precipitation, um, more text boxes listing the other kinds of precipitation besides rain. Um, but I'm going to go over here. I had opened in a tab. This is one of my favorite interactive websites and there's a lot of great interactive websites about weather but this BBC one is terrific because it breaks weather down into all of its elements and has a little interactive about each one. The precipitation one lets you um, click through and view, gives a nice definition of precipitation there, and lets you click through and view the different kinds of precipitation through a context of someone camping and then precipitation starts to occur and you can see what happens as a result. So I'm going to just copy this link while we're here and go over back to glogster.edu. Now you can make any element in your glog a link. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to make this the actual link. When you click on edit, see how there's this little chain link icon? It says add link. Just click that and paste in the link, say apply, say OK. Now it won't be an active link until you go into preview mode. And then the pink circle is what always indicates a active link in Glogster. So when you click on that link, it opens up the page just like I wanted it to. So that's how you make a link in Glogster. So as I said, this could be pretty handy in terms of making a Glog your homepage and linking parents or other teachers to some resources. Um, be a good quick way to do it. So the other piece I'm going to show, so notice I'm in preview mode here. I need to go back to edit to get the Magna tool. I'm going to talk just about the sound and the video aspects of Glogster. Another um, couple of features that make this a great resource for speech and language therapists because we could make recordings where kids practice sounds, practice sentence formulation, uh, practice discourse, um, and it will give them that feedback so that they can hear their own voice and hear their own production and, you know, re-record if necessary. And it's usually, you know, really motivating for students to be doing that too. So I'm going to go to sound. Okay, and what you do to actually record off your own computer is you select grab. You can upload sounds that are recorded, say, in GarageBand or someplace else. Um, if someone recorded a file, but I'm going to use grab. You have to click allow to allow flash to um, grab your sound from your mic. So you can see now that it's catching me right here. Okay. You have to click allow to allow flash. So I'm not going to actually save that one. but let's try another one and I'll actually record. So thinking about what I already had on that page, 
I had the speech bubbles around when it's hot, or sorry, uh, it's too hot. When it's really hot, I like to go to the beach or sit on my porch or drink a cold drink. When it's really hot, I like to go to the beach or sit on my porch or drink a cold drink. So that could be, you know, a context for helping your students to add to what already you what you already put in the blog and formulate a complex sentence. I'm going to call this when it's hot. Okay, and I can close that, and it's now in my gallery. So you can add a player, which is sort of like a frame. When we saw frames earlier, players are like a fun graphic that you can use to play a sound. So I'll just use this one. Okay, and again, it won't play in edit mode. You have to go into preview mode. When it's really hot, I like to go to the beach or sit on my pool. So there the sound plays. So with regards to video, the way you would do that is the exact same way you would do the sound. You click here on video on the magnet tool, and you can go to the um, grab feature and it will access your webcam and you can record from there. There's actually an issue with MacBooks currently, which is what I'm using and I think Glugster is working to resolve it. So I can't demo that, but it has worked in the past and I'm sure it will work again. One of the things about Glugster is it is highly dependent on flash. So sometimes things get a little out of sync and cause it to not uh, work the way you might like it to but that's how you would record again is grab and that would be a great way for you to record um, a student in a video if you'd like it'd be very motivating for them uh, as you've seen in some other uh, video other blogs that I've posted um, just keep in mind that you would want to either have parent permission to publish it um, and make it a public blog or you can keep it a private blog um, you know, and you wouldn't want to reveal any confidential information in any case. But you can link to videos from SchoolTube or YouTube. SchoolTube is more likely to be available in your district. I know some people have YouTube blocked. Um, and the way you do that is you can simply search for a video. This one is a sort of lesser known schoolhouse rock on weather. And I like it. It gives a lot of information. Um, but at the beginning of it, there's some dancing girls, which is kind of odd and maybe inadvisable and not in the best of taste and awareness of feminism. But um, I don't think students would notice it, and it has a lot of you know value anyways. So you can choose for yourself whether you would actually use that video, but this is how you would if you wanted to. So you would click link and add the video to your files and you'll see it's there. I actually had it there already. So just like in the other case, you can, a case with the audio, you can add a player. Um, I'll add this one. And then the video can be placed where you would like it to be. It can be reduced in size a little bit. Again, it won't play in this edit mode you have to be in the preview mode for it to play. Introducing the greatest show on earth, the weather! And there are the showgirls I talked about. So, in any case, that's how you add a video to your blog. And I was speaking about the publishing 
levels. Um, just to call your attention here too, you can mark things unfinished, meaning they'll definitely not be accessible publicly without someone logging in as you. Um, they can be finished and you can mark them as, um, when they're marked as finished, they can only be seen when you log in or the, someone from the class logs in. And when it's public, it's public on the web. So that's just something to keep in mind when you might be using video of, of any kind. So I'm just gonna save that. And that's links, audio, and video. Thanks for watching.